Okay, we are here in the custom foodscaping wood shop. Emmanuel just made 13 of these obelisks just this morning. And what he's done is used this amazing jig that he's made to do this really quickly. Emmanuel, give us a tour of the jig you made. Yeah, so it uh, helps me uh, keep, keep my skates uh, aligned here, the legs, and then uh, I can take these uh, made blocks, just kind of set them in place. Um, so I don't have to do any measuring or anything like that. I just did a drawing of what we're building on the plywood, put blocks uh, to match the drawing, and then, um, yeah, that way we know everything's nice and consistent. So then once I get those up there, I can kind of lock in one side, and then I can pull this until it matches this edge, until it matches this edge over here, lock that in, and then so on. Then we'll have, we can use a clamp to kind of pull this tight as needed. Kind of match that edge up there. Mm. Um, and then once we've gotten as far as we can get there, we can kind of pull it off and then finish it up. Beautiful. All right, here we are at our cutting station now. Emmanuel's brought over the piece of wood and the template piece. And so now what's the next step? Yeah, so uh, I can add a bevel. You can see this angled cut already put into my saw at 11 degrees. That's what we're using. So I can add that to this block here. Um, and so what I've done here is I set up a stop and I actually put it uh, to the length of my longest part. And then I have a series of spacers that I made to help me achieve my other parts. And that way I don't have to reset this stop and I can just keep all those spacers bundled with this whole packet. But anyway, that's beside the point. So what I'll first do is kind of put my first cut in here on one side to clean up the first edge. And then I send it on down, got my spacer in here. Then I do the second one. I have uh, a block that matches this, and then I can continue to cut these out on the table saw next. All right, let's check that out. Okay, so now we've got the bevels that we needed on this random block, and now we'll use the table saw here. What 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 do we need to know about this step, Emmanuel? Um, yeah, so I've got this set. I think main, mainly uh, just keeping this distance uh, consistent throughout the batch is going to be really important because that actually determines the length of some of our longer pieces. So I'm trying to stay super consistent with that with what I set it with. Um, so always having my templates handy and, and things like that. Um, for safety, I'm using a push stick. Um, yeah, I just tend to run this batch and I just, you know, stay out of the no zone. Great. Let's see how it works. Okay. Boom. Okay, and now this is what's really exciting to me is basically what you've done is you've allowed us to take what is a super scrap piece of lumber that's hard to find a way to utilize and then you're making these parts out of it and then this is going into a whole bundle of parts that you're using to batch out those obelisks, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I have uh, bu buckets full of each part. Um, you know, it uh, really adds up the amount of linear feet that you need to create and being short on scrap is really annoying when you have to switch processes. So being able to batch these out, I can make hundreds of these at a time. Um, it really, yeah, it really saves a lot of time in the long run. All right, and then let's take kind of a final look at what your final product is, yeah. which we have over here on the other side of the jig today, all of these obelisks that these will be um converted into gardens for climbing crops things like peas pole beans can even be used as a tomato trellis and or anything else that wants to climb anything else we're missing emmanuel 
Um, yeah, so to complete this, I've got, I'm gonna have a four foot spar that goes uh, down the center on each side. Uh, so again, I'll be back at the table saw, back at the chop saw, making more of those. You rocked it. Thanks.